blessed greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. I greet you on behalf of this wonderful network, Tobago Inspirational Network, and on behalf of our church, Destiny Empowerment Global Ministries, where we meet every Sunday in Shore Park Complex. You will know where that is. We meet there every Sunday at 9 a.m. and we are having a wonderful time where we share the word of God with you. We pray for each other. Hallelujah. We encourage each other to walk in the fear of the God, in, in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we pray that you will also join with us on Fridays where we meet in Lambo Community Center every Friday at 6 p.m. where we are praying. We are praying for those in the community. If you have someone who in who is in need, hallelujah, of a touch from God who needs deliverance or who needs strength, hallelujah, Jesus, then we believe God for them, that God will minister to them, that God will touch them, and that God will heal them in the name of Jesus. And while we are also believing God for a move of God, that God will be moved in this time, hallelujah, that people will begin to manifest what God has deposited within them, hallelujah, from the beginning of creation hallelujah i want to get right into a message this is a two-part message i'm going to share on the desensitization to hell the desensitization to hell a two-part series i'm going to share i pray that you will share this message with others also that they also can be blessed you know i believe i believe i believe that the message of love is very critical and very important to bringing people to the kingdom of god i do believe that but the message of hell is just as critical hallelujah it seems that this has been absent from the message of the gospel in this time and season the message of hell and sin yes i believe that if a person serves out of fear then they won't stay if they're in a relationship out of fear then they won't stay in that relationship for too long Hallelujah, because we are not called or we are not supposed to be in any, any kind of relationship based out of fear. Because the Bible says that fear is, uh, that the, there's no fear, sorry, in love. And God is good, God's goodness, we know the Bible says, will lead us to repentance. We know that. But today, it seems like our gospel message has been void entirely of even the concept of hell and altogether it seems to have been shunned for the fear of that we will offend someone or we will run them away hallelujah jesus i want to remind you that jesus himself refer to hell on several occasions i know i used to say before that he spoke of hell more than heaven but that is not entirely correct hallelujah when you do the research hallelujah but he spoke about hell enough times on several occasions that will bring it to your attention that will cause you to awake to its reality hallelujah he highlighted hell and he himself spoke about it more than anyone else. So it had to have been important also to the gospel message that he brought besides the kingdom of God. Because I know there are many who said today that, you know, we were supposed to just be speaking about the kingdom of God because they spoke about the kingdom of God. Ah, but how can you, how can you, how can you enter into that kingdom? Hallelujah. If you don't understand the full message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's also a hell to shun. In Mark chapter 9 verses 43, Jesus spoke of hell as a place where the fire, he says, never goes out. Ah, yes. He spoke about hell. He implying, he also spoke about hell implying mm, that it is an unending place of torment. He also spoke about hell in Matthew chapter 10 verses 28. He warned about the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Ah yes. Highlighting the eternal nature of the punishment of those who will go there. He spoke about hell as a place, as I said, as, as, as a place of fire, of an un, unending torment. Furthermore, he spoke in Matthew chapter 25, verses 41. Jesus mentioned hell as a place prepared for the devil and his angels, emphasizing its purpose as a place of 
punishment for the forces of evil. In the parable of the rich man and the poor man, we know the parable of Lazarus. It is a vivid account that illustrates the reality of hell as a place of torment and separation from God. You know, the Bible warns about hell about 160 times. At all of those times, Jesus referred, he referred to that, to hell in about 70 times, all of those times. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, heaven is mentioned, we, we, as I said, more than hell, the Bible, re the Bible refers to hell on several occasions. Hallelujah. He referred it to it enough that will show us that is a place that needs to be shunned. Just as important as we need to go to heaven. It was a topic that Jesus saw it fit to mention. Hallelujah. On several occasions. But Satan today has done a good job in trying to make hell seem as less frightening or tormenting mm. and heaven as less appealing because today we can see he's portrayed in Hollywood and on shows as heaven is, play, is portrayed as a place where people go where you see babies flying around with little wings <laughs> or playing or someone playing a violin ah yes while Satan as, as, as show, is seen as someone who is powerful and great and who can give men success. Ah, yes. Who can grant wishes. And today good seems to be bad and bad seems to be good. You even see some cartoons and even some um, little children's um, shows where they show you as, as good wishes and good demons. As if there's anything good that could be good about demons and evil. So he is causing us to be meant to be desensitized ah, to, the, to the gravity ah, of hell. Ah... Hallelujah. And to its torment. Uh, Isaiah chapter 5 verses 20 says, Woe to them that call evil good, and good evil, and that put darkness before light, and light before darkness, that put bitter before sweet, and sweet before bitter. And this is the turnaround where the sweet seems to be bitter. A bitter pill to swallow. Even this gospel that I preach right now, it is a bitter pill to swallow for some. But it is sweet to those, hallelujah, who receives this message. Ah, because it brings life. But to those, hallelujah, who, sp who, 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 who spurn the very message that can give them life, it will be very bitter, a very bitter pill for them. But it seems that this is what people prefer today. Darkness is seen as having the capability to give you light by desensitizing. It's evil. How do you know when you are desensitized? How do you know? Well, according to, the go to Google's definition, it says to be desensitized. Listen to this. It says it's to make someone less likely to feel shock or distress at scenes of cruelty or suffering. Or by the overexposure to such images. You know, I, even me, I, I, I will be honest to say sometimes I have to pull myself back from the things that you view. Because many a times we will not stand to watch a man being shot in front of us with a gun. It would appall us and we would probably be shaking in our boots. But sometimes we as men, you know, we like some adventure. We like action because we're men. We're going up, pow, pow, we're seeing guns and so Because that's what we love. But sometimes you, as a believer, you can expose yourself so much to so much violence 24-7 a day. That you no longer, you no longer, you will see somebody being shot on television over and over. Their head kind of blood spilling all about the place. And you feel unmoved. Because now you are being desensitized. That it can happen before you even physically now. And you are on move. You no longer show sympathy. Hallelujah. To those who are being abused and battered. 
You see, so you have to guard your spirit, guard your mind. Another definition it says is desensitization means to cause someone to be less affected by something. It also means to make emotionally insensitive or callous or to make insensitive altogether, period. And many today have become desensitized to hell, desensitized to sin. It no longer seems to be a place to be feared, to be shunned. Ah, yes. And when there is no longer a sense of fear for the things you once did, then you have become desensitized. Things that you have become what the Bible called past feeling. It's in the Word of God. I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to show you from the Word of God. Ah, yes. The things you, know, you, once, you, you, you once felt guilty about, you once felt terrible about, you have now become comfortable with them. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth, you henceforth walk not as the Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, you see, being alienated, that means to be actually be an alien. You become an alien to God because of the vanity of your mind from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Hallelujah. Because of the blindness of their heart. You see that? Because so, although you have physical eyes, they still, you still have an inner eye that you see with. I'm not talking about any third eye, devilish, third eye, no, those things are devilish. I'm talking about the, the eye of your understanding. It has an eye, you, they, there's a conscience that you see with, a deeper sense that you see with. Hallelujah. And if you ignore that, it could, be, it could be hazardous to your spiritual life and your soul. You see your physical you see the physical, but you're blinded from your understanding. Hallelujah. And you don't see the eye of your heart or your mind blinded in your understanding. Darken. Hallelujah. And that's what Satan wants to do. Darken your understanding by desensitizing you. Hallelujah. To the truth of what the reality of the things that he's trying to bring to destroy your life. How did it get to that point? Because of the vanity of their minds. The depravity, the depravity of their minds. It says in the Bible, it says in verses 19 of this same text. Listen. Who being past feeling. Ah, that's from a, a Greek word, apagio. It means to cease to feel pain or grief. Or to become callous, insensible to pain, or apathetic. Having given themselves over, the Bible says, unto lasciviousness, to work all on cleanness with greediness. How are they able to do these things? Because they are becoming sensitive, past feeling, apathetic, callous. They no longer feel a sense of grief. Hallelujah. Concerning their lifestyles. When, you, when your conscience becomes seared, you are in danger of hell. That's how you know. Hallelujah. That you're in danger of hell. When your conscience becomes seared. What does it mean to, for your conscience to be seared? When your conscience no longer speaks to you. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 says, Now the Spirit says or speaketh expressly in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron seared is from a Greek word called teriazo to render unsensitive you see that to render unsensitive, unsensitive, bear in mind what I'm talking about, being desensitized to hell. Speaking lies and hypocrisy means those who willingly embrace falsehood to justify their sin or their pride. But it also refers to those who claim to be teaching the Bible while just using it as a prop for their own ideas. Yes, we see a lot of that today. And this is the prevailing spirit that will take some, that will, that, will, that will cause some Christians, some 
um, professing believers to backslide because of insensitivity. This is a very great danger. This is dangerous to the believer. When your conscience no longer speaks to you, you are in big trouble. Ah, it is easier for God to, to, to go into a bar somewhere where someone has been, has been strung out or is, uh, is addicted to alcohol. Or someone who's a strung out in the streets. Someone who's in the gutter somewhere on dope or drugs. And they're ready to end their lives. Is it easier for God to reach someone like that? Hallelujah. And bring them to a place where they receive his son Jesus Christ. And they come and be cleaned up and serve God wholeheartedly. <coughs> it is easier than for a person who have become insensitive to the voice of God. That is an even greater danger. Hallelujah. Christians, believers, or people who refuse to listen to God when he's trying to keep them on the right path or correct them concerning the life that they're living. Hallelujah. You no longer hear him. And it's not that the voice of God, listen, it's not that the voice of God is not speaking. It is that you can no longer hear it. It has become so faint because you have become desensitized. Ah, then that means that you are in a great place of danger. You no longer fear. When you hear about hell, it is no longer fearful to you. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that we live in fear. We live in reverence, but we shall also understand that, yes, there's some things. It says, the Bible says, give fear to whom fear is, is required. To whom fear is you. Honor to whom honor is you. There's some things that still needs to be feared. Mark chapter 23, verses 28 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, all sins shall be given unto the, uh, uh, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. But listen to this. But blasphemy, wherewith soever they shall blaspheme, but, the, but blasphemy, sorry, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, have, hear what it says, have never forgiveness. But he is in danger of etern eternal damnation. And why is that? It says, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. Hallelujah. But blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. It says it shall not be forgiven. And why is that? Why is that? Because they said, hear what it says in verses 30. Because they said that he have an unclean spirit. Oh my God. They were in danger because they were saying Jesus was using the prince of demons to perform miracles. You see that? So when you criticize, you begin to get to the place now where you, you know more than anyone else that you can criticize. You know better even than God that you can criticize men and women of God who are called by God. I'm talking about the true ones who are truly called, not those who self-proclaim because everybody's not called. Everybody who's not, who's not gifted and anointed by God. But when you just, you, you, you just rope everyone together and you be, begin to criticize even those who may be moving in the power of God, bringing healing and deliverance to people, and you ascribe those things to demonic powers. My God, you are in danger of hell. You are in danger of a place of you'll never come back from. Because he says you will never be forgiven. Hallelujah. It says that here. Yeah. Because they said Jesus have an unclean spirit. You better be careful of the things you point your finger at. You better be careful because you can be in danger of coming to a place, hallelujah, that can set you on a path, hallelujah, to an eternal hell where there's no one can bring you back from it because there's no forgiveness for such a thing. Hallelujah. 
And one of the biggest ones that you can send you to hell is unforgiveness. And this can bring torment. People bring torment to their own lives. Nobody have to torment you. You torment your own self by unforgiveness. Matthew chapter 18 verses 32 says, Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all the debt that you owed. Hallelujah. Because you desired me to do it. Should you not have also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth. Hallelujah. And he delivered him to the tormentors. Ah, yes. Till he shall pay all that was due him. So likewise, God said, Jesus said, this is Jesus speaking. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you. If you from your hearts forgive not everyone, your brother his trespasses. So you see that? You can bring torment even on your own life. Hallelujah. So you may be asking yourself, what has all of this has to do with the desensitization of hell? Well, it's very simple, my friend. Very simple. You see, you see because sin is the only thing that can take you there. It is. So to make you insensitive to sin is to prepare you for hell. Yes. And the sad thing about it is that no one knows when they are insensitive until somebody tells you you are in a relationship with someone and you don't realize that the things that you're doing, that how the other person is affecting the other person. And you may be saying, but I do this, I feel, but then there's areas that you don't realize that they has become, you have become very, very callous about or apathetic about until someone tells you. Then you realize it is the same thing. That's why he, God tell Ezekiel to go and warn, hallelujah, the sinner and warn the righteous. He says, if you don't go, their blood will be on your hands because they will know unless someone goes to them and tells them and warns them. You see, we always need someone to warn us. We always need someone to tell us something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Warn the wicked. Lest he dies and his, you'll be responsible for his blood. Insensitivity can put you in such a daze that you could be heading to hell and you don't know unless someone, God sends someone to tell you. My God. You see, no one, no one stumbles. No one goes to hell by default. <laughs> no one goes to hell accidentally. It is their choice. Hell is not a place you will want even your worst enemy to go. Not even your enemy. But today it seems to be a place not to be feared anymore. Because Hollywood has made it seem as a place you can go in and out as you want. Ah, yes. <laughs> ah, as if they are doors. Ah, I wish I had time to really expand on these things. And the devil is there. It seems as if the devil is there working for you. Hallelujah. Hmm. And yet you are, for those who are on his side, and you can come out and drive a nice car, and people go to hell back and forth. And whenever you're ready, you are on an assignment, and you can go on an assignment and return. My God, let me tell you, don't fool yourself. When you're in hell, you're not a demon. If you go to hell, you don't become like demons. If you go to hell, you become the tormented, not the demons. Ah, yes. They were there long before who were cast down, who were on the earth. But when you go there, you don't become a demon. You become the tormented. You be, they're, they're Satan's workers to bring you into torment. Mm. Some people actually believe that when they died and, and so they become and now they're working. No, you don't work for Satan. Hallelujah. In fact, if you don't serve the Lord, then you're really serving him. <laughs> so in other fact, in direct, you're probably just working for him. But let me tell you, there's a high price to pay. Ah. And Satan has been, here Satan has been able to sell hell as, he, as an idea very well. The hell is where you will have a good time. Ah. I have friends already tell me, listen man, I, I, I don't mind, I go in there, all of my friends go in there, I go in there too, we can have a good time and party down there, you really? Let me tell you, it's going to be a hot party, very hot one. It's going to be a very hot time, a club. Hey, 
I wish next week I will really expand on these things and show you the, gra the, the, the graveness of this thing called hell. Next week, but I don't have the time right now, but in the second part. Hmm. He may not get you to stop believing hell exists. Maybe to the unbeliever he would, but to a believer, if he can get you desensitized to how serious a place it is, then he can get you to live anyhow. Ah, yes. So that you end up there and you do not know how you got there. You do not know that the things that you're doing can send you there. So we always think of Satan as blatant and bold face in our face. But you can get there before someone because of insensitivity. And you, <coughs> and you can greet them at that place. Hallelujah. Shake hands with them if you don't make it right. Hallelujah. Hell is, it, it, hell is, and death is not choosy. Proverbs 27, 20 says, Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. Why sin can take you there? Because Isaiah 59, 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins has hid its face from you. That he will not hear you. I come to a close, because I'm all the time. Friends, I'm telling you, don't play. Don't play with this thing. Next week, I will really open it up and really share with you how serious these things is. But my time is out. Until next week, I pray that you will stay tuned and you will share this message. So God bless you and do have a great week.